The Secure Shell protocol allows for a variety of methods that a connecting client can use to authenticate itself to the server. Authentication methods generally supported by Secure Shell clients and servers include GSS API, Public Key, Keyboard Interactive, and Plain Old Password. In this video, I provide an overview of the Public Key Authentication method within the context of the Secure Shell protocol. To prepare for successful public key authentication, a public-private key pair is generated on the Secure Shell client side. Sometimes this public-private key pair is referred to as an identity. The private key is kept secure and protected on the client side. The public key is, well, public. It cannot be used to derive the private key, so the public key can be shared with others. For public key authentication to be possible, a Secure Shell server must first be configured to allow the public key authentication method. For public key authentication to be successful, the operator of the Secure Shell client will need to send their public key to the Secure Shell server administrator, who then configures the server to allow that public key for authentication, associating that public key with a specific user account. Different server implementations have a variety of different mechanisms for setting up this association between a public key and the user account. In OpenSSH running on Linux platforms, this association is accomplished by placing the contents of the public key file in OpenSSH format into a file named authorized underscore keys located in a folder named .ssh within the user account's home directory. In Van Dyke Software's Secure Shell server named vShell, on macOS, Linux, and other Unix operating systems, a public key is associated with a corresponding user account by placing the public key file into a public key folder inside a folder named .vshell within the user account's home folder. In addition, vShell supports linking to an existing authorized underscore keys file within this folder if you have already configured public keys for use with OpenSSH on the same system. In Van Dyke Software's vShell server for Windows, an administrator associates a public key with a specific user account by creating a folder named to match the user's account name within vShell's public key folder. The client's public key file is then placed into that user-specific folder. Once a Secure Shell server has been properly configured with the authorized public key for a user account, the Secure Shell client can attempt to use its key pair to authenticate to the server. What does a public key authentication attempt entail? To start off, encryption is established between the client and the server according to the Secure Shell protocol. Once encryption is in place, the Secure Shell client tells the server that it would like to perform authentication as a specified user account name. The server then replies with a list of possible authentication methods that are available for that account. If the public key authentication method is listed, the client sends a public key authentication request to the server. This request includes the user account name, what type of key is being used, the signature algorithm the client will use to prove it has the corresponding private key, and the public key itself. Usually, this first public key authentication request is unsigned. It does not include a signature of the data computed with the client's private key. The server looks at the public key data and checks to see if it has a matching public key for the specified user account. If the server cannot find a matching public key, or if the signature algorithm isn't supported, the server sends the client a failure message. If the server does find a matching key and the signature algorithm is supported, then the server replies with an OK message. This is akin to the server saying, I found a matching key, but it wasn't signed, so your authentication attempt isn't complete. If the client receives an OK message in response to the unsigned public key authentication attempt, it will subsequently send another public key authentication request to the server, this time using the private key to sign the request. The server uses its copy of the public key file to verify the client's signature, a verification step that can only be successful if the signature was done using the private key component generated at the time the key pair was originally created. If the signature does not compute, it means that the client does not have the corresponding private key file and the public key authentication attempt is rejected with a failure. If the signature is correct, the server lets the client know that the public key authentication method was successful. And now you know the general process associated with a secure shell client using a key pair to authenticate itself to a secure shell server. That's all for this video. Stay secure, my friends.